Hello and welcome to Raj Sabha TV's special presentation on the history of Indian cities. In this episode, we'll talk about Port Blair and along with that, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Andaman and Nicobar a splendid group of islands in the Bay of Bengal. One of the chosen spots for tourists, lover of water sports and those who want to merge themselves into absolute beauty of crystal clear emerald waters. But reaching here, these islands took thousands of years. The ancient history of these group of 572 islands, islets and reef, though a subject of deep anthropology and linguistic study, the recorded history of the islands begins with the exploration of sea routes by the Europeans. See, actually the Andamans and Nicobars are two different group of islands. And Nicobar was known to travelers, explorers, colonials, adventurers, and so on and so forth. It was known to all of them because that was in the in ancient sea route. Even today it is one of the busiest sea route that leads to Malacca Strait. Okay. So Nicobar was occupied by many European countries, European people like the French, the Portuguese, they came as adventurers, explorers. Then the colonials were Austrians, the Dutch, Danish East India Company, they occupied Moravians, they came as uh, to convert for conversion uh, Christian Christianity. But Andaman was untouched. Andaman was actually uh, kind of you can say isolated and it was not occupied. It was only the indigenous tribal people who lived here. Actually, as I said, the Andaman Nicobar position was location as it was that Southeast Asia, which was going to be वो जब भी यहाँ तूफान में या किसी डिस्ट्रेस में फंस जाते थे, तो ऐसे में उनके रुकने के लिए या उनके क्रू मेंबर के लिए कोई यहाँ पे जगह नहीं थी। तो काफी सालों से ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी को ये खबर जाती रही थी यहाँ से कि यहाँ पे कुछ एक रिफ्यूज की जगह होनी चाहिए, एक मतलब एक रुकने की कुछ जगह होन Studied by anthropologists, archaeologists and historians worldwide for the migration and settlement of human race from Africa to Australasian region. From prehistoric times, these islands were a unique abode of group of Afro-Australioid ethnic race people as well as Mongoloid race people. Much of what we know about the life at these islands has been beautifully installed and curated by Mukeshwar Lal in his Kalapani Museum at Port Blair. First and foremost is that uh, the museum culture is not there much in India. Okay. And, uh, but the history of Andaman is very rich directly associated because the first war of independence is the genesis of Kalapani and we have a very rich history which nobody in India knows whoever enters the museum goes back very satisfied inhibited with descendants of early human race the islands also attracted several folklores and myth owing largely to its solitude in the Bay of Bengal for long, these islands remain inhabited with indigenous tribes and thought of as formidable to set foot for any kind of settlement. The map prepared by great Greek astronomer Claudius Ptolemus provides the earliest historical reference regarding these islands. Ising, a Chinese Buddhist monk, had referred these islands as Lo Gen Ku meaning the land of naked in his passages dating back to late 7th century. Marco Polo, a 13th century Italian explorer and merchant who had described these Andamans and Nicobar islands as very large islands with plenty of spices, a rare place which was not governed by a king. 
So Andaman was occupied by the Negritos. Different, uh, there used to be very various uh, divisions, but today we call the Great Andamanese, the, the ones who live in Strait Island, the population has gone down like anything. Then we have the Ongis of Little Andamans, then we have the Jarawas, then we have the Sentinelese who live in uh, the North Central Island. Okay. These are the tribals of Andamans. Andaman was never occupied before prior to 1858. Of course, there was first settlement. It was for a very short while. Prior to the written history of the islands by the British, some 9th century Arab records and the record of Chola King also refer to these islands. There are also records of some Portuguese and French missionaries tried to colonize and propagate Christianity here, but could not succeed. But it's only from the late 18th century the group of islands get formal mention in the written history by the British, even though that was confined to just few islands in the southern Andaman region. On a spree to expand, the British East India Company explored Indian seas, in particular the Bay of Bengal. Marine surveyor Archibald Blair was the first to take voyage to Andaman Islands in December 1788, leading to the establishment of first British colony in the Indian seas. The islands have been known to seafarers for millenniums, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. They have been depicted in the maps of the world made about 2000 years ago by Ptolemy. And why the British have chosen these islands? Well, the empire was expanding and the British were always on the lookout for outposts to safeguard their sea lanes. And to develop them, they had the convict labor which they were using to develop these places. You know very well they have done it in the colonies in the United States in Australia, in New Zealand, in many other places. So the British were looking after these islands as a kind of an outpost where their ships can take shelter in times of storms, which were very frequent in the Bay of Bengal. This area has tropical rainforest. There used to be a lot of cyclonic weather, almost 10 months in a year. So ships trapped in the cyclonic winds were thrown on the shores of these islands. Apart from that, there used to be Malay pirates. Malay pirates, they also used to loot the ships around. Okay. Because the Malay pirates, they came as pir uh, pirates here. They used to take uh, sea wealth from here. They used to take tribals as slaves also for slave trading. So for all this reason, the companies from where those ships belonged, or the countries, they used to believe that since India Burma and Southeast Asia was under the British East India Company. So they would write letters for protection and safety of their people and the ships. Kafi log yaha se jab bhi guzarte the, koi jahazi ya koi dusre log guzarte the, to unho dur dur se dekhte the aur Andaman ke baare mein badi matlab vague si aur bilkul sahi baatein nahi matlab galat galat jankariyan kitabon mein us zamane mein rehti thi. Ye alag baat hai ki to fir yehi sab reason tha ki jab 1788 mein 1788 1788-89 the first English settlement came up in Chatham Island in the southeast Bay of Great Andaman. The island was first named as Port Cornwallis after the British Governor General Charles Cornwallis. The settlement, however, was far from a holiday destination that we see today. It was merely a small batch of British officers and native Indians who were brought here by the East India Company. 
but within eight years, by 1796, the islands were vacated. As per English records, the spread of unknown diseases had led to the winding up of the settlement. He selected an island, today we call it Chatham Island. It was known as Mark Island also. And the settlement starts there. But that was for a very short while because the settlement shifted from South Andamans to North Andamans where the mortality rate increased, people were dying and once the in charge of the settlement also died, they abandoned the settlement, they abolished and they left these islands. That was in the year 1796. And then for 62 years nobody comes here to Andamans. Chatham Island, where there is a settlement there. In 1793, the settlement was very good. But after some reason, it was shifted to the north of Andaman. But in 2-3 years, many people in the settlement had increased a lot. Many people were sick there. So, I thought that it was more expensive. So, it was better to stop it. So, in 1796, they closed the whole settlement. The whole settlement was closed. Then, for the next few years, they didn't have any trouble with the Andaman. Before the penal colony came up, before the cellular jail came up, these islands have already been occupied after the surveys by Lieutenant Archibald Blair and a small colony came up here. It could be used for replenishment of ships, it could be used for sheltering the ships, it could be used for protecting the sea lanes from their enemies who were the French at that time. So the British wanted to develop these islands as a, a kind of a, a well developed a place where they can place their army, guns and ships so that they can carry on their maritime activities uninterrupted. The islands remain without any settlement or to say free for next 60 years. Once again it were the British who established a settlement in the islands. The settlement however was much larger than earlier in the scale. In the chains of British rule India was seeing its first major uprising, the 1857 mutiny. But as the uprising was quelled by the British forces, hundreds of Indians were taken captive and imprisoned. It was then the British worked on the design to establish the penal colony at the Andamans Island. A commission set up by Lord Canning recommended a penal colony on the seas of Bay of Bengal. The Great Mutiny or the First War of Independence as we believe it, we call it the First War of Independence of 1857 that again decides the Britishers decide to occupy these islands and establish a penal colony under the punishment term called Kalapani. And from 10th March 1858 the first batch of 200 freedom fighters land here and the islands are occupied and then gradually the war of independence or the struggle for independence never subsides. The Britishers are never able to totally subside that and whatever the movement happens there in the country they are all sent to Andamans under the Kalapani punishment. शुरू हुई और और उस टाइम उस वक्त में इतने ज़्यादा लोगों को इतने ज़्यादा क्रांतिकारियों को देशभक्तों को अरेस्ट किया जाने लगा कि अब अंग्रेजों के सामने एक बड़ी समस्या थी कि इनको रखा कहाँ जाए क्योंकि मुख्य भूमि के जो जेल थे वो ऑलरेडी बहुत भरे हुए थे ओवरक्राउडेड थे तो वो एक सही जगह तलाश रहे थे कि जहाँ पे इनको ऐसी एक सजा एक ऐसे एक जीवन दिया जाए जहाँ पर इनके जीवन से सबक लेकर दूसरे लोग फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल में जाने से घबराए तो और उनको ऐसे में सबसे ज़्यादा उपयुक्त जगह जो लगी वो अंडमान लगी अंडमान में उन्होंने एक कमेटी भेजी और उस कमेटी के डॉक्टर फ्रेडरिक माउथ के नेतृत्व में जो कमेटी आई थी यहाँ पर उनके रिकमेंडेशंस पर उन्होंने अंडमान को बंदी उपनिवेश के रूप में पूरे अंडमान निकोबार को बंदी उपनिवेश के रूप में अपने हाथों में ले लिया मतलब एक तरह से उन्होंने और बाईस जनवरी अठारह को अपना यूनियन जैक यहाँ फैलाकर अंडमान निकोबार को ऑफिशियली अपने अंदर अधिकृत कर लिया उन्होंने। 
Well, the British already had penal colonies to which they transported Indians. For example, Mauritius. There were uh, convicts sent there for development of the colony. You can read about it in Charles Darwin's Voyage of the Beagle. Uh, there were other colonies in the, uh, the straight settlements. They were also penal colonies. So the British have been sending out convicts from India, that is United India, you know, un, uh, undivided India and other places where they were uh, having power to these penal colonies. The aim was to have cheap labor. The convicts need not be paid anything. They have already forfeited their life. Most of them were already sentenced to death, which was later commuted to life imprisonment. So it was quite easy to manage them. And management of these convicts has been uh, developed into a kind of a well-developed science in England more than 300 years ago. The first settlement was still a little island away from Port Blair, the capital city of the islands today. It was at the Viper Island. The first settlement took shape starting 1858. The island derived its name from English vessel HMS Viper in which Lieutenant Archibald Blair and his crew had come to Andaman and Nicobar Islands in 1789. The vessel, it's believed, met with an accident and its wreckage was found here near the Viper Island. The first penal settlement had nearly 200 prisoners and the officials posted for supervisory and administrative purpose. It was here. Political prisoners, or to say the freedom fighters, were brought in far from the mainland. The Viper Islands Jail was a precursor to what we know today the Cellular Jail or Kalapani Jail. This is the gallo house of the Viper Island Jail, the gang jail as it used to be called. In ruins, what remains today is silence reminiscence of those who fought for the motherland. Even though it was an open jail, the rules at Viper were strict. Inmates, often tied with iron chains at the pretext of breaking the rules set by the officers. In 1858, there was a new viper in Viper. a viper a a barracks. और एक 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 बस्तियों मतलब पुरानी यहां आज भी बस्तियां हैं जिनके नाम भी बड़े पुरानी तरह से रखे गए हैं तो इन बस्तियों को इन्होंने कॉन्विक्ट विलेजेस कॉन्विक्ट स्टेशंस के रूप में खुले में जहां जैसे हम कहते हैं कि खुले में रखा जाता था तो खुले में मतलब एक बस्ती होती थी बंदी बस्ती बंदी बस्ती में उनको रखा जाता था उन उस बस्ती का अपने रूल रेगुलेशंस और उसके वॉच एंड वॉट के लिए डिसिप्लिन के लिए बकायदा लोग अपॉइंट किए जाते थे नियुक्त किए जाते थे वहां पर सो द फर्स्ट जेल केम अप इन वाइपर आइलैंड इट वाज अ मैसिव जेल यू कैन सी द रूइंस इवन टुडे इट वाज अ वेल प्रोवाइडेड जेल विद फैसिलिटीज फॉर वाटर ग्रोइंग वेजिटेबल्स वेल लेड आउट रोड्स or pathways and quarters for the prison staff and a gallows which still stands today. These are the only remains of what is left of the first jail constructed at the Viper Island. Built in 1867, this hilltop gallow house has survived the elements and time to narrate the tales of time. Etched on these walls are silent stories of pain, struggle and defiance of a first ever batch of freedom fighters. 
see, they were not ordinary convicts, of course, but they were a mixture of all, because they were sepoys who were working for the companies initial period, and they were farmers, they were uh, mm, educated people like uh, Maulana Fazle Haq Harabadi, all those. So there was a creamy layer as well as the other ordinary. Everyone who revolted against or raised their voice against the British atrocities, they were all sent. Like later part Wahhabi movement happened in the country. The Wahhabis were sent here, few of them. The Namdhari movement or the Kuka rebel, few of them were sent here. And like so on and so forth, they were being sent to Andamans. And this flow never ended. इनके रहने के लिए कोई बंदोबस्त नहीं था और बिना किसी परार अरेंजमेंट किसी तरह से इन लोगों को अंडमान भेज दिया उन्होंने और शुरू में तो बड़ी दिक्कतें आई फिर इन्होंने अपने रहने भर के लिए कुछ झोपड़ियाँ बनाई कुछ बैरिक्स बने आने वाले दिनों में इनका इनके नंबर बढ़ते गए और जहाज़ आते गए तो ऐसे दस्तावेज हैं बताते हैं कि अठारह से जुड़े मतलब फर्स्ट वॉर ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस आज़ादी की पहली लड़ाई से जुड़े करीब तीन लोगों को Among several prominent freedom fighters and prisoners was Sheikh Ali Afridi, the great Pathan from Northwest Frontier Province of Undivided India, who was sent to the gallows for murdering the British Viceroy Lord Mayo. A sepoy of Punjab Mounted Police, Sheikh Ali was deeply moved and enraged. seeing the conditions of inmates and atrocities inflicted by the british officers wo yahan pe hope town naam ki ek bandi basti hua karti thi wahan rehte the to wahan pe aur unhone lord mayo ko maar diya tha bahut hi aasani se lord mayo ko unhone chaku se maar diya tha jab wo mount harriet se wapas laut rahe the phir shirele ke baad mein viper ke phansi ghar mein phansi ho gayi to ye sab ghatnaye aur aage bhi jaise yahan jo freedom fighters और अन्य बंदी जो क्रिमिनल कॉन्विक्स बाकी जो लोग थे उनकी जो जनसंख्या थी आबादी थी जो बढ़ने लगी तो अब अंग्रेज़ों को लगने लगा कि अभी यहाँ तो एक तो जो पीनल कैरेक्टर है यहाँ का जो सजा जो देते हैं उसको और बढ़ाने की जरूरत है For the next few decades, the penal colony continued to house several Indian inmates and revolutionaries. but it wasn't until the construction of the seven wing cellular jail these islands began to be called as kala pani when these uh, freedom fighters or the convicts were released they were put up in the barracks and they were not chained no handcuffs no chains no fetters they were released and they were uh, they could go out work freely they could come and stay together in one single barrack and uh, especially the criminal convicts who were being released from here they used to go back and the freedom fighters they stayed back those who came under kala pani they stayed back they got married here they settled here but those criminals they used to go back and there they used to spread the word that andamans is a place where we have we are having gala time fun there's no st punishment stern punishment or anything and that created a problem for the britishers because most of the criminal most of the convicts in the mainland jail they started out sending applications to be transferred to andamans to kalapani and that was when they decided that okay now this is too much so we need to have a proper jail or something like that so they deputed two officers lyle and lethbridge commission was set up here and they gave in the year 1890 they gave their report saying that we need a proper jail with cells so that isolation has to be there and that was the idea and cellular jail comes up earlier the idea was to have it in viper itself but then they shifted to atlanta point the fortress of countless atrocities inflicted upon the freedom fighters The cellular jail was built in 10 long years by the very prisoners who were brought in from the mainland to be lodged here. 
also known as Indian bed style. The jail acquired its name over its design of having individual cells, the purpose of which was solitary confinement of the prisoners. This cellular jail was made by the jail. When in 1890, there was a jail committee in Andaman. And then, in 1893, the work of the jail was started in the jail. And as soon as the jail was made, it was not that the whole jail was made by one side. And after that, there were freedom fighters and other convicts here. It was not that. As soon as the jail was made by one side, as soon as the jail was made by one side, if the jail was made by one side, if the jail was made by one block, as many of the jail was made by one side, they started to keep the freedom fighters and other convicts. Later, as the freedom struggle increased on the mainland India and as more and more prisoners were being brought to the Andamans, they thought of building the cellular jail for which they already had the plans because similar jails exist in many of the British colonies all over the world. In fact, there are similar jails in India itself. I visited Rajamandri Central Jail which is, a, which is exactly like the cellular jail. It was built much earlier and I have seen uh, old Melbourne jail in Melbourne which is exactly the same as the cellular jail. Of course, they have, this had seven wings, some of them have five wings, some have uh, more wings, but this is unique in the sense all the cells are solitary cells. Even though cellular jail in years to come became a bastion of untold torture and agony, it was also chosen by the destiny to see the light of a free country. Nothing could break the resolve and perseverance of our freedom fighters. In the next episode of Talking History, We'll bring in alive the story of cellular jail and how these islands became a true reflective of diversity of a nation post-independence. <laughs>